Hello, greetings to everyone. Uh, this presentation is on the topic experimental characterization of a hybrid PVT air collector. The outline of the presentation is as stated on the slide from the background, the review of relevant literature, the methodology, results, discussions, conclusions, and references. Fossil fuel based energy sources are finite and they generate emissions that are harmful to the planet on which we are occupant of at the moment. The, there is a quest to generate energy from other sources that are less that produce less emissions and these sources must also be sustainable. Uh, solar energy is a good alternative to repl replace this fossil fuels and um, solar energy as a renewable energy produce less emissions. Um, another advantage of uh, adopting solar energy is that the general prices over the years have declined and this is uh, making it more competitive with uh, energy sources. The sun is the central source of all renewable energies and however the sun is not, the radiation of the sun is not evenly distributed across the whole earth. Um, but fortunately for our continent, we have most parts of our continent that receives a lot of solar radiation between 1,800 kilowatt hour per meter square to about 2,700 kilowatt hour per meter square. The solar PVT technology actually is a combination of the two major categories of solar technologies available. That's the solar thermal and the solar photovoltaic. So while the solar thermal generates heat energy and the photovoltaic technology generates electricity, the PVT, which is the photovoltaic thermal combination, generates both the um, heat and electricity, as we can see on this diagram. The relevant reviews we have here uh, Higazi, who designed a simple flat plate air, air heater with, uh, with photovoltaic cells pasted on a black absorber. This absorber is taking the heat from the PV cells and the coolant, cooling medium used was air. Um, other literatures here talk about how easier it is to use air as a cooling medium compared with the other available resource um, cooling agents that are available. Um, Dark et al. also made a design um, trying to categorize them based on the number of glazing and the, the airflow. So we have zero glazing, which is the unglaze, and we have a single glazing with a single airflow or single pass. We have a um, double glazing system with a single pass. We also have a single glazing with double pass. So all these categories have their various characteristics that can be seen in his work. Uh, this study actually was done in considering three different scenarios of false convention. And uh, this is done by alternating or varying the number of funds that will be operating at each particular time. So the scenario one considers six fans, scenario two, four fans, while scenario three has two fans. Like the setup has only six fans at the exit. So as you can see on this, the six fans, we disconnect two of them. So disconnecting two would, would give us a different scenario of force conversion. And then in the third scenario, we disconnected three of these fans, uh, four of the fans, and then we have two of 
the test procedure is as shown in this flowchart from the side selection which should be assigned that there is no shading to the analysis and the results and then finally to the characterization these are the equations that were used we have the useful heat gain from the collector as the product of mass flow rate temperature change and the capacity heat capacity uh, we also have useful heat gain if the whole collector were, were at a fluid inlet temperature and this is given by the equation 2 we have the thermal efficiency of the collector given by equation 3 then we have the cumulative thermal efficiency given by equation 4 um, this result is for scenario 1 the thermal efficiency was seen to fluctuate within the range of 5% to 27% from 10 a.m. to about 12 noon and when it attained its peak at around 58% as we can see here the rate of useful heat gain varied unsteadily within the range of 0 0.08 watt to 0 0.8 one three watt during the early parts of the experiment between 10 to about noon as seen in the case of thermal efficiency the useful heat gain also rose sharply to hit its peak at 0 0.18 at 12.15 and remained close to the peak until 12.32 when it began to drop to lower values for scenario two, it can be observed that both the useful heat gain and the thermal efficiency has had similar profile. Thermal efficiency varied between 5 to 40 percent until midday, with a minimum thermal efficiency recorded at 11:30 a.m. 11:30. The um, thermal efficiency was highest within the values of 30 percent to 42 percent around 12 noon to 1 to about 1 p.m. The rate of useful heat gain also varied unsteadily between 0.03 to 0.14 watt until midday. The minimum rate of useful gain was observed about 11.30 which is similar to the minimum at uh, of the thermal efficiency as was said earlier on the highest useful gain values were between 0 0.122 and to 0 0.19 uh, where this occurred around 12 noon to 1 o'clock while the other re the, the, there was a reduction for of about 0 0.3 about 0 0.82 and remain there until 1340 which is 140 the rest of the useful heat gain values varied unsteadily in small ranges of 0 0.05 and 0 0.06 within 140 and 240 insulation variation was unsteady throughout the period unlike the other two scenarios this scenario which is scenario 3 shows that um, all the trends had similar recordings among the three plots that we have but again the thermal efficiency and the useful heat gain exhibited much more similarity than the insulation thermal efficiency and the useful heat gain varied unsteadily throughout the whole period between 6% to 42% for the thermal efficiency and 0 0.01 to 0 0.21 for the useful heat gain. Instantaneous thermal efficiencies cannot be used to clearly depict the different performances of air collectors under the scenarios considered. However, the cumulative efficiency as given in equation 4 can be used to better differentiate between how the various force conversion scenarios affected thermal efficiency. 
So the figure shows the cumulative thermal efficiency plot of the three scenarios. Scenario one had a final cumulative thermal efficiency of about 0 0.5, followed by scenario two, 0 0.29, and scenario three, 0 0.18. The thermal test data is depicted by the equations of straight line as shown on the plot here. Um, the y-intercept, which shows the maximum or the optical efficiency, it means at the point where all the losses are set to be zero. And then the right-hand side, which represents the component of the overall heat loss coefficient. In this case, scenario one, has the highest optical efficiency of 0 0.49, followed by scenario 2 with optical efficiency of about 0 0.44, and then scenario 3 with efficiency of 0 0.34. According to the equation that we had, uh, which we displayed earlier on, we can also see that heat removal factor depends on the fluid inlet temperature, the ambient temperature, the area of the collector. For the scatter plot, it is evident that that scenario 1 has the highest FR, which is uh, a heat removal factor, and hence also depicted the highest optical efficiency. Similarly, scenario 2 with the second highest of 0 0.44 at the intercept on the y-axis with scenario 3 with the least of 0 0.34. Scenario 2 had the greatest gradient, that's the UL of about 15.10, which implies that there was the greatest heat loss under this scenario. That was followed closely by scenario 1 with gradient of 14.37 and lastly by scenario 3 with the least heat loss of 6.22. From the data collected, an average wind speed of about 1.49 meter per second and uh, 2.75 to 2.78 were measured for all scenarios. Even though wind speed in scenario 1 was the greatest during the experiment. Scenario 1 did not practically record the highest, highest heat loss. This could imply that the heat loss is not only a function of wind speed. However, scenario 3, which had the lowest wind speed during the test, recorded the least heat loss as well. Uh, the value of UL varies with wind speed. In conclusion, it can be concluded that uh, from the plot, uh, for a given value of solar radiation, the ambient temperature, useful energy produced by the system decreases as the temperature of the fluid entering the collector increases. It is because rising fluid inlet temperature reduces the heat, the, the it reduces the rate of heat transfer to the fluid. The slope of the line represents the rate of heat loss from the collector. It's, it is the test point where the inlet temperature of the fluid is equal to the ambient temperature. Furthermore, we, it is clear that from this plot, mass flow rate does play a significant role in collector efficiency because of because of relatively low values of heat capacity of air that's the faster the flow the higher the useful heat gain thermal efficiency of the hybrid pvt solar air collector decrease as reduced temperature parameters increase and hence the higher the reduced temperature parameter the lower the overall heat loss Thank you very much for listening and paying attention.